Hey everyone, wanted to show you a video of a setup for hooking up my video games that I came up with a while ago, and I can't decide if I like it or not, or if it was a good idea in the first place. So uh, over here, the main goal was to be able to hook up different video game systems in each of these spots and be able to pull them out and swap them as I as I you know lost interest or was wanted to play something else, and I had three main requirements. I wanted to be able to hook up two at a time. I wanted to hook up video and audio, and I wanted to be able to hook up ethernet and power. So what I came up with was this. So I took a normal electrical box, pretty deep one, and I'll explain why in a second. I put a keystone plate on it and used HDMI USB keystones to run all the wires back to one spot and hook up games. And here I can unplug them and plug them in as I, as I see fit. So this one isn't plugged in right now, but this particular box I set up as a prototype has two HDMI's and two USBs with power and it's running actually this, the AVS. So, uh, it, if the TV was on, it would, it would show up. Uh, and the way I did it is I was going to build one for each of these spots and run all the wires to one location. And so in this drawer over here, just give it a quick overview. And it's a total, it's a total mess because I, I never went much further than, than the first one, but long story short, the USB cables are coming into a, um, a power bank that, you know, splits them out, a power splitter an automatic HDMI splitter. So, um, when, when, this thing senses that one of these inputs is active. It changes the output to it automatically. It also has a remote. And then if I wanted to, um, I could send ethernet, uh, over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that box and its cords out and get it on the bench and kind of show you what my thinking was. All right, here it is out of that entertainment center. And it's just a normal one gang electrical box. Like you use in a wall along with a keystone, a six port keystone plate with obviously the keystones in it. Bought some cheap wire loom on Amazon and loomed up the two HDMI, HDMI and USB cables coming out of it. I tried to buy cables that were the same length. So you can see that it comes out pretty, pretty clean. I think these are five feet. And obviously I've got the two HDMI and the two USBs coming out. And so if you watched my home network rack overview, you know I really love keystones for the modularity they give you. So I could put two more USBs, two more HDMIs, two more ethernets. I could swap them out without any tons of physical work basically. Um, and if you don't know what keystones are, it's basically this, this square form factor. So, um, a really typical one is these male to male connector, you know, two males come in, uh, ethernet keystones that you'd see in like a patch panel. Um, I could, you could imagine that in these two empty spots, I could have two of those. Uh, but what's interesting is they come in all sorts of other stuff, uh, other connector styles. And so, um, here's another ethernet one, but it's a punch down style. So they have those, uh, and then HDMI. So H you could plug in an HDMI cord to each side. That's obviously what I'm using here. They have USB ones. That's what this is. Uh, and there's all sorts of different plates. So here's a Here's a huge six port plate that you'd use in a double gang box. Um, I think traditionally in something like, you know, a surround sound setup for your TV or something, but the possibilities are, are as, as endless as you can come up with basically, uh, if you have an idea for connecting two things together, really. And so I love using these keystones. And so the problem with this, I was super excited when I came up with this idea, but in practice, it's been a little difficult. So the first is like how thick the wire coming out is, and I'm not even using all six spots. Um, so an improvement I would make is try to find the thinnest, I probably just bought whatever was cheapest, but try to find the thinnest HDMI you could. I think that would be, or, you know, these days, I guess we're moving towards sm the smaller HDMI form factor mini or whatever it's called that might help. So that's another problem with this. And then I'll open it up and show you. It's just, it takes up a lot of space. I'm not, I'm not convinced that it's better than just running um, the cables on their own, or even just looming them up and running them without this box. Um, and having, you know, the, the appropriate connectors on each end. So I'll open this up real quick and show you what's going on in here.
All right, so here's problem number one with the setup and why I needed to buy such a deep one gang electrical box is in your typical HDMI cord, a lot of the connector, there's a lot of um, length on the connector and that's taking up a lot of space in this box. The keystone itself is not, is not all that thick, um, but you'd, you'd have to find pretty low profile connectors and they're out there. Um, I, this has just happened to be what I bought. Uh, so that's another, that's one problem with, I mean, you know, it's just bulky. It's not, it's not as streamlined as, as it could be. And then another problem is the, I don't have a, a loose one, but the USB keystones are quite long. You can see they're twice as long as the HDMI ones. Uh, and then again, you've got the long USB cable coming off. And so maybe a different USB cable type would be better here, you know, mini, or maybe even the new USB C's are better. You can get USB C keystones. But the vast majority of the stuff, you know, the game systems you're going to plug in, like that analog or that AVS, they're going to want this older style, older style uh, USB connector. So the, the biggest problem is like, I was like kind of surprised by how much space <laughs> the connectors themselves took up. And I mean, it was, it was quite a bit of work to get them in here. And then another one is not that big of a deal, but I had to use a, a pretty big whole uh, drill bit to actually remount enough space for this bundle to come out. And I could probably only get um, another, maybe two more HDMIs in this, in this cable loom before it starts getting, kind of getting ridiculous. <laughs> so I think it was, it was more like a fun project to set up, but I'm not convinced uh, as to how practical it really is versus just running these cables in a loom. So like probably just looming it would be the better choice for my, my entertainment center set up out there. So to summarize, I think it, what I set up was overkill. It was fun to work on, but in practice, it's just not necessary to have that bulky one gang, the blue one gang box back there. And I think going forward, I'm just going to have the cables on one end loomed up. I think that worked out really nice and was super easy and well worth it uh, going to wherever I need them. And you can buy female to male cables uh, and I can just use keystones in the meantime. Uh, maybe someday I'll replace these, but you know, I like putting a keystone to use. So yeah, this will work fine. I'll have that in the, the cabinet with all the hookups and then these can run to the actual video games uh, that I want to hook up or whatever, uh, whatever else. This was, this was fun to set up. Um, looks kind of cool in my opinion, but it's probably better for more of a permanent installation, I think, or maybe something you're going to drag around like some sort of land setup or something uh, where you want this to kind of be one contained unit. Um, but yeah, in practice it was, it was fun, but didn't really add much to the equation. So yeah, let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next one.